Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy, the Knight of Justice. Back again with another power scaling video. In this video, we will be doing another regular Ragnarok video and we'll be discussing the powers and abilities of Hajan, the Demon Lord of the Sixth Heaven. But before we get into that, if you like the video, please hit like, share, and subscribe, and also comment down below for more videos you want in the future and stay notified for what comes out on the line. Now, without the way, let's get into who and how powerful, how almighty is Hajun. Hajun is a legendary berserker of the Nether Realm and the Demon Lord of the Six Heavens. Previously, the god of misfortune, Zurufuku, Hajun appeared when Zurufuku was devoured by two dragons, taking his place in the sixth round of Ragnarok. Hades explained that Hajun is a legendary berserker from the ancient times. And the legend surrounds him that a white light and black shadow binding the horns of the netherworld shall waken. The eternal darkness shall be born, otherwise called the demon lord of the sixth heaven, Hajun. Hades believes that his existence was nothing more than a fairy tale. But later on we learn that the reason for Hajun's disappearance and his reappearance now is mostly due to to what happened to his power and another god involved with his resurrection. In the past, the reason Hajun suddenly, suddenly disappeared was that he was so strong that his body could not handle the immense power building up within inside him and it destroyed itself. However, Beelzebub managed to require what was left of Hajun in Helheim and to captivate the scheme to devise a plan to bring him back by planting the seed and the young Zerofuku, making him the vessel for Hajun's resurrection. At first glance, despite his demonic appearance, Hajun shows to be quiet and calm and relaxed, and eager, humble, yet confident about his powers and abilities of others. As shown when he was surprised after Buddha blocked his first attack, after managing to slash out Buddha's eye, he shown more of an unexpected side of himself, which is more sadistic and arrogant making fun of Buddha once attacking land on him. Hajun shows even more arrogance having this epitome god complex, calling himself the supreme being. He also appears to have a habit of saying divine retribution. At the end of the fight, Hajun shown desire to surpass his old self, who was weak, and fear from being challenged from someone who never feared him, who didn't show a sign of fear within him. Buddha and looked down upon him, calling him weak, which the fear had eventually led to its end. Since Buddha's main ability is a pure enlightenment, aid consciousness is able to see the future, or rather fluctuation of souls which allows him to see the future, granting him a form of precognition. However, one drawback of this future vision is that if there's no light in the soul of the entity, Buddha would not be able to read the future. But can also be used against someone, which he used against Hajun, who felt fear in his black soul and can be seen. Now, how strong is Hajun? Hades states that Hajun possesses incredible strength on a magnitude in which many gods can't even hold a candle to. And as I said before in the video, he was able to destroy half of Helheim, the realm in which he rampaged in. Hayes explains prior that the cosmology is split into three layered worlds, heaven, earth, and hell. So this may be headcanon on my part, but if Hajun is, able to, is capable of destroying half of Helheim, given enough time he could destroy the whole realm. Now she would believe that Zeus and his fight with Adam and his Adam form would destroy heaven if he lashed out too much. And if heaven and earth or hell are even treated as planets or even universes, it's likely they're talking about universe given how Hades worded it when he explained the cosmology. Now how large these realms are is up to debate. Hajun scales to Buddha who he's evil, easily able to fight toe to toe with and even overpower on multiple occasions. Even Buddha merged with Zerofuku creating a new vow, Hajun was still able to seriously be a threat to him. This same Buddha was confident in fighting Zeus 
and was not intimidated by his threats or his appearance, despite Shiva being scared of Zeus. Since Obuda knows about Zeus and Shiva, he should be aware of their achievements since every other god does and he's also been watching the fights. I covered how powerful Zeus, Shiva, as well as Thor in my Zeus video. If you want to check that out, you're welcome to. But I'll give a brief summary on how powerful these beings are. Shiva is capable of creating and destroying the world on a whim and state to be able to destroy the world, burn it to ash, and recreate it from its ashes. Thor has multiple statements of being the strongest Norse god or the strongest god and it stated that his hammer Mjolnir is capable of just tearing apart the lands and seas and its awakened form even shatter earth. Zeus has been stated in, when he watched the fight against Lubu and Thor that this is the greatest thrill since the Big Bang. He's also been said that he can use the powers of creation to his whim and return anything that doesn't suit his fancy back to the void. In the anime, it stated that he created everything out of nothing, and if he doesn't like it, he returns to the void. Zeus beat his father Kronos, who was the personification of time, during the battle against the Greek gods and the Titans. So, these various gods have multiple planetary to even universal statements, which Buddha and Hanjun should be in around the same ballpark as these gods. Even if you don't agree that they scale above or below, they should be around the same area and power as they are. You also have a statement of Buddha's new divine weapon, the great Narafa sword, Zero, that Buddha's new weapon is the ultimate divine weapon at that point of time. Meaning you can make the argument that it is stronger than Thor's Mjolnir, which prior had a statement of being the strongest of the divine weapons forged in heaven. So, Buddha's new weapon should be relative, if not above, Mjolnir, going off of the feats and statements shown. It should also scale the Mjolnir's feats as well, if it has the statement, or if you want to take this statement at face value. And as I said before, Hajun has consistently shown to be able to be on par with Buddha and be a threat to him even when he has this new divine weapon. Hajun also had this, has these unique abilities where he's able to manipulate his body and force parts of himself into weapons, such as hand blades, axes, hooks, drills, and even swords, and techniques based off such as the heavenly piercing demon drill or the blaze of glory. The heavenly piercing demon drill is when Hajun enlarges the entire right arm or, or part of his other arm and creating an immense powerful whip like drill which pierces right through his opponent, such as when he pierces through Buddha's shield and slashed out his left eye. The Blaze of Glory was formed when Buddha was able to damage Hajun's left arm and Hajun made it into a giant sword, swinging it with immense power. The attack is powerful enough to overpower Buddha's karma destroying Shima style technique and shatter his staff. After that, Hajun was able to completely destroy Buddha's six realm staff with his blade. Hajun has a resistance to some form of future sight and some form of fashion, having a black soul, since Hajun's soul is covered by a veil of darkness, making it immense for Buddha's eighth consciousness. However, if his soul starts to tremble with fear and unveil the darkness, it's able to show light, and Buddha is able to counter this. But if a, he has this, since if using this character with his not being feared or not having a sign of fear, if a character is able to view his soul by based off of light, he can resist it. Now, how fast is Hajun? Now, how fast is Hajun? As Hades stated, Hajun has a power on a level that most gods cannot compare to. He also scales to Buddha, who can and other gods can perceive the fight between Adam and Zeus. Zeus is able to casually blitz Ares, who can perceive his fight against Adam. In his fight against Adam, the two continue to go faster and faster until having the fight and the time frame of less than one millionth of one hundred million of a second, so basically moving at extremely fast paces. With this count, you can put 
at the leak at light speed or massively faster than the speed of light. And as I said before, Hyun has shown multiple times to even blitz, keep up, or just overpower Buddha in his fight. So not only Hyun is a powerful demon god and well hacks and with various techniques at his disposal, he's incredibly fast. It's a real shame that he was defeated, though I was rooting for Buddha either way, given that I like his character so far in the show. Or not the show, or say in the manga, I hope it comes out in the show on Netflix. Which I'm pretty sure they'll portray Buddha's character quite well, as they did in the manga. But that's the end of the video. Hajun is an incredibly powerful character, and I enjoy seeing him fight in the sixth round of Record of Ragnarok. If you want to see more videos involving Ragnar Ragnarok, such as What If versus Battles, or more power scaling involving the characters, comment down below. I hope you all enjoy your wonderful Christmas. Hope you get plenty of presents and enjoy a great life. Stay safe out there. Peace.